Xbox One exclusive launch titles. A sentence more disappointing than getting a match on Tinder, but all of her pictures are with a group of friends, so you know she's the clapped one. Don't believe me? Let's just run through them real quick. Rise Son of Rome. I'm pretty sure you'd catch a shorter prison sentence for drop kicking a minor than you would being caught playing this game. Zoo Tycoon is a safe bet if you're buying a console for your six year old or you're on the spectrum. And Forza 5 is just a game where you press a couple of buttons and the car wins for you. So basically it's like driving a Formula 1 car. Then that just leaves a game nobody has thought about since 2013. One that didn't deserve to be forgotten. One that's better than its reputation would ever suggest. Welcome to Los Perdidos. I didn't even try to do that. I'm just so white that my tongue just automatically puts an accent on anything that's not English. I'm that dude that goes to a foreign cuisine restaurant and actually thinks he can pronounce everything on the menu. Anyway, Los Perdidos is three days into a zombie apocalypse and honeybees are thriving. We play as Nick Ramos, who's a mechanic. So you know his school report card said something along the lines of, has potential, gets distracted easily, struggles with simple maths equations, and is often seen selling LucasAid on the playground. Nick is clearly starving because he just picks up a bagel off the highway floor and eats it. Clearly my dude has never heard of the five second rule. I've got a small penis, I mean, I've got a small problem, as Nick needs to get to the other side of this infested quarantine area filled with zombies. Luckily though, I have plenty of useful weapons to fight off these zombies, like this stepladder that looks like its entire purpose is to help dwarves get on the kitchen counter and use the sink. That's actually one of the things I love the most about the Dead Rising franchise, the sheer variety of weapons. I can go from hurling a 12 inch pepperoni pizza to using a fire axe which can literally separate zombies in half. This may seem harsh, but I've actually just set up this geezer for the perfect role in a two and a half men reboot. Casting half a human corpse would actually bring more to that show than Ashton Kutcher ever did. Okay, so I make it out, but the problems like me on December 1st just keep coming. For starters, what the fuck was that ledger jack nick? I'm pretty sure people jump from the Twin Towers with better form than that. Speaking of the Twin Towers, a plane comes plummeting down, wiping out most of the highway and transitioning us into a beautiful intro sequence. Right, I know there has been cases of people surviving plane crashes, but here I have the option to save multiple people. You're telling me they tanked a plane full of zombies crashing down from 30,000 feet without so much as some light bruising or ligament damage. I see Dan and attempt to help him out, but my man gets blown up. We then have another opportunity to be the hero and save Cindy. But honestly, if your name is Cindy, you don't deserve to be saved. Our objective is to make it to the diner, and I'm pretty low on health, so I pick up another one of those three day old bagels, but I forget which is the eat button and just toss it directly into a zombie's face, covering it in cream cheese and salmon. Funny thing is, I actually considered getting that bagel for longer than I considered saving Cindy. I then proceed to absolutely wail on some zombies with my flashlight, which makes a surprisingly good weapon. Not good enough to avoid damage completely though, so I knock back an entire bottle of headache pills and surprisingly don't keel over so we just power on. An in-game tip then tells me, if I have a connect plugged in, I can actually attract the zombies by saying, over here. Ah, who remembers 2013, when Xbox shipped their consoles with a connect that would always be on so Bill Gates could watch you. Everyone was outraged, but I was honestly flattered he would want to watch me cry, eat Doritos and masturbate. Not necessarily in that order. All right, I make it to the diner and there's all kinds of survivor stereotypes. We have the thick mama who takes care of the crew, dark mysterious tumbler girl who probably has more scars than a seasoned war vet, and finally, the dude in his mid 40s who's weirdly attached to his mother and probably has dodgy external hard drives that he had to wipe before this apocalypse started. However, they both last about as long in this story as any date I've ever had in my adult life. I don't know what it is about starting a day off by standing on the table, belting out the national anthem to the USSR that puts women off. Tumblr girl also runs off as she can't allow herself to socialize due to abandonment issues from, I'm assuming, her father leaving. I mean, her outfit screams childhood trauma, so it really could be anything. However, my type is also alternative girls with daddy issues, so I'm ashamed we're gonna miss out on that one. Wait, how old is she? I should probably Google that. And so now we're just left with Nick, Redneck Dude, and Big Mama, whose name is actually Rhonda. And we make the decision to go to Rhonda's garage. I don't know how that's any better than the diner, but we all jump in the family SUV. However, just before, I nearly get us all killed while trying to get a nice thumbnail. I guess that's what happens when you hang out with a YouTuber in the apocalypse. I can imagine if the apocalypse really did happen one day, you still get couples committed to the daily upload grind, making vlogs with clickbait titles like, he cheated on me? 
open brackets with a zombie question mark exclamation mark question mark exclamation mark question mark angry emoji close brackets mr beast would be thriving doing challenges like last one to turn after getting bit by a zombie wins a hundred thousand dollars the cheeky little bastard so after running down hordes of zombies we make it to ronda's garage and she wants to get the tv working so she can catch up on ice road truckers or whatever it is that butch lesbians watch on tv anyway she says while she gets the tv sorted i should go outside and catch some fresh air while the sun's still up Yes, you staying inside working on a TV, I go outside and actually have to provide for us in a zombie infested city. Sounds like a fair agreement. Now able to do what I want in this open world, I of course find a trolley and participate in my favourite game. The rules are simple, find a group of adults, elderly, or children, or zombies, and ram straight through them using your trolley. It's a point based system, similar to bowling, so you know if you hit a 10 with one swoop, that's a strike. If you can't find a trolley, then no worries, just find the nearest wheelchair and you're all ready to go. I actually used to look after one of my neighbours who required a wheelchair to get around the place. We'd always have this light-hearted banter between us, so sometimes, as we were going down a hill, I'd let go of the wheelchair for a couple of seconds and watch him roll away. Anyway, long story short, I sold him to the black market for a little bit of extra cash, as, you know, he couldn't get up and run away, so what was he gonna do? Honestly, if there ever was a zombie apocalypse in America, I think all would be good. I mean the sheer amount of dudes who own AR-15s because they can't have fulfilling relationships with women. I mean, because they need it for self-defense. While on my adventures, I find this girl who's really using what meaningful time she has left on this planet wisely by spray painting a wall and rebelling against the system, even though there is no system anymore, she just needs you to know that she doesn't fall into societal norms. She's all out of spray paint, and me being a nice guy, I offered to get her a couple more cans. However, I get a little bit distracted, and yes, I did grab a suave new Hawaiian shirt, thanks for asking, but I also find a 24 case of beers. Naturally, I see if it's possible to get Nick absolutely plastered, but my man's is a bit of a lightweight and starts throwing up after four beers. I commit to finishing the entire case, and by the time I'm done, I'll be surprised if Nick has any stomach lining left. Inside the same house, I actually managed to find a leaf blower, and it makes for a formidable weapon against the undead. Just kidding. With an average airflow of 179 miles per hour, you'd think it might split skin, but I think there's more of a chance of me satisfying a girl in the bedroom than there is of this doing any kind of damage beyond drying their eyes out a little bit. Three spray cans later, and an outfit change into a mascot uniform, which isn't ideal for this Californian heat, and Miss Rebel can finally finish her masterpiece. Wow, okay, is, is that it? I really risked my life for you to paint that? I think Stevie Wonder could have executed a better period piece. Shit art skills aside, I extend the offer for her to join our little crew, and she says, sure, but also warns me I'm not going to get any, as she's not into dudes. What a pretentious bitch. Just assuming I want to get in her underwear. I'll have you know, I like women who are actually employed and don't just spend their free time going out their way to have heated discussions on forums about something they don't agree with. So me and my new bestie return to Rhonda and she's got the TV working, what an alpha. Big man on the TV says in six days they will detonate an incendiary bomb over the city, wiping out all forms of organic life. Wow, what a valiant demonstration of leadership. If at first you don't succeed, just bomb it. Spoken like a true president of a powerful country. There's quarantine zones at the edge of the city, and you can make it there in the next six days for a safe escape. So naturally, that becomes the plan. First things first though, we need a unit of a vehicle to get there. Now look, I've never been a mechanic, so I don't know the skill set needed, but my man Nick manages to seamlessly combine two cars into one. This man is seriously, unnecessarily flexing on us. Like, all we needed was maybe a little bit of protection, a small bit of armour on a car, but no, he's gone the extra mile and created a mini tank. I really feel like he should be working for SpaceX, not carrying out brake pad replacements and oil changes. This absolute behemoth obviously gets us across the city with efficiency, and a huge testosterone boost, so a double thumbs up from me. Unsurprisingly, arriving at the quarantine area, there's no survivors left, so our situation has taken a pretty big U-turn. Things also go from bad to worse, when the extras from Mad Max Fury Road decide this is their time to shine, and take Rhonda, screaming all of the nasty things they're gonna do to her. It's real sweet of them to think that they're actually going to be able to get an erection in front of a real-life woman, and not underperform like they always do, which ultimately was what led them to joining a biker gang in the first place. Now is the time for Nick to assert his dominance and take down this biker gang using their worst enemy, a car. I mean, two objects heading towards each other at 80 miles per hour, one with seatbelts and crumple zones, the other with about as much protection as a fishnet condom. 
pick your winner. I proceed to put on a clinic and absolutely crush the opposition with my much bigger vehicle. Remember though, size doesn't matter. Me and the boys have weekly Beyblade duels and sometimes the smallest one dominates the field. Also ladies, on a completely unrelated side note, would you leave someone just because they have 3 inches? I just haven't won a duel in 5 weeks and I'm wondering if I should change my build. This isn't at all related to anything apart from Beyblade, but yeah, please let me know in the comments. Anyway, they even tried to stop me by bringing out the man who is the number one crack smoking, anti-BLM, anti-LGBTQ, Trump supporting, child welfare check claiming, RV living redneck boss but he is no match for a good old fashioned Molotov cocktail. I really hope Nick is dealing with all this pretty good in his head. Things have really switched up for him. He's gone from overcharging women for car repairs to first degree murder in a couple of days. There's no time to think about that though, as we still can't catch a break because some military dude is now in a standoff with us. I swear, in America, you can just whack on some camouflage uniform, a pair of Tims, and freely tell people what to do, and they'll listen, no questions asked. Anyway, turns out it's just my boy Diego from the block, so I dap him up. What a man. Still can't catch a break though, as then I get bitten by a zombie. What an awful start to my week, honestly. In the next episode, I'll have to head back to the city and try find myself some Zombrex, otherwise it's a rip for us, which would really be a shame, because we're on a heater right now. I mean, 2k kills? That's insane. Thank you as always, I really do appreciate it, and a big thank you as well to those of you who have clicked the join button and become a member of the channel. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, let me know if you want to see more, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye bye. I'd like to just give a huge shout out to my motherload Voiboys and above, Gerardo Cruz, Bjorn van den Hatter, Charlie Waldock, The Gamer Tag, and Xyphin Productions. Thank you guys for your support.